Vermont and UMass Lowell. This one makes the sheet with Lowell a one and a half point favorite at home and a total of 140. So, Jeff Nadu, you looked over the Thursday card, and this one stood out right away. Why did it stand out right away to begin things? Well, these are the two best teams in the America East. Uh, Vermont, we always know they're going to be there. John Becker, they've been kind of leading the roost in that conference for a real long time. Uh, but Lowell is good under Pat Duquette. They've been good the last couple of years. Beat them last year in a game in Lowell. But there's a little bit of revenge here because Lowell lost the second game in Vermont, and then they lost in the America East tournament. I believe it was the semifinals in Vermont. So a lot of revenge here. This is a group that has the seventh longest winning streak in the country right now, Lowell. They haven't lost since December 16th. And you look at how they're doing it. Um, a lot of kids that came over from other institutions, higher end ones. You look at their big Kulabali comes over from Pittsburgh and St. Bonaventure. Um, you know, Yuri Covington, he comes over from William and Mary. This is a guy, and these are the guys that are solid players and have done good things. And at this level, they've been good. You look at what they do. Good offensive group, play in and out basketball, which is helpful here. If you look at Vermont, they are bottom ten in America in uh, offense allowed at the rim. They just don't have a lot of rim protectors. They're more of a guard-oriented offense. They take a lot of threes. Throw in the fact, I know Kyle knows this, Lowell is one of the best three-point defenses nationally in America. They're only allowing 27% from three all season. Now, I will say, I think some of it has to do with their competition. They haven't exactly played a great schedule, but Vermont has played in a lot of close games, a lot of one possession games, throwing the fact that this is on the road. I think Lowell's the play here. I think it's telling you they're the play. I think they get a win here at home. They probably go to Vermont and lose. But in this spot, I think they beat Vermont and get uh, a little revenge early in the uh, conference season. Kyle Hunter, as Jeff alluded to, uh, Vermont does have five straight wins. They did take a loss at Miami of Ohio. Right back at the beginning of the year, they also lost to Virginia Tech for what it's worth. Conference play on the road. Thoughts on this one, including the total? Yeah, I think uh, Jeff's right about the nice revenge factor here. Lowell did win by 15 when they played at home last year. Then they lost the two games, and especially losing in the America East Conference Tournament. I and mean, they were pretty close to, to uh, the big dance there, and they lost. I think this is a pretty good spot for them. And Lowell is second in three-point defense in the country. Uh, Vermont has shot a ton of threes this year, so I don't think those threes are going to be too easy to come by in a game like this. Also, um, Lowell's offensive weakness to me is they turn the ball over too much, but Vermont really not a team that forces turnovers uh, really low when it comes to that. I think bottom 20 in the country. So uh, Lowell's the better defense. They've played really well this year. Uh, very similar teams to last year as well. And like I said, last year they were able to blow them out here at home. Uh, I think this is a pretty good spot for them. And a Vermont team that is not one of the best Vermont teams we've seen. They're certainly at least a quality team, but I think this is a good spot for Lowell to get a win here, too. One thing as well, he he, he mentioned the turnover stuff, which you back to K-State last night. That was one of my concerns. They had 16 turnovers, and that was your issue. Lowell has been much better in conference, third in the league in turnover percentage, which is helpful, and, and I'm happy about that. Obviously, he played tougher teams in a non-conference, but um, again, just – Grabbing a home team, all you got to do is win. And interesting, just one more time, philosophically, we talk about this all the time. It's only a point or a point and a half line where you might have gotten a little better value. You just want the win. You just want the money line here on this play, right? Well, yeah, because and, – and, and this is really important in this game because – if you look at Vermont games, I mean, they play a lot of close games. I remember at one point uh, this year, you remember that wild game they had where I think it was against Yale, where they were laying one and a half. They were down five with five seconds ago and won the game by one. You think about it, if you just play the money line, you win. You didn't, you lose. So <laughs> in these kind of games, you figure they're going to be close. But Kyle's right. This is going to come down to the three-point shot. Vermont like Creighton and like a lot of these teams, they're very dependent on it. I'm hoping they're just not going down tonight. That's going to be the big thing here. Yeah, you're pointing out that's one of the craziest finishes in recent memory in college basketball. They got a two to be down, help me with my math, to be down three at that point, got the steal, 
And as he's firing the three-pointer for the tie, he's fouled. And it becomes a four-point play. It becomes a six-point comeback in literally like three or four seconds like you're talking about. But if you were laying a point, it's a push. So Jeff Nadeau says, I ain't messing with that. UMass Lowell against Vermont. And he says, give me the Catamounts or give me the UMass Lowell against the Catamounts on the money line uh, here for play number one. 